Morning. New U.S. weather data shows the Arctic just finished its warmest winter on record. Sea ice hit record lows for this time of year. There's so much open water mm -hmm. where normally the ocean would be freezing into thick sheets of ice. And this time of year, that is what you expect, and that's how it has been yeah. forever. Right. And uh, the experts up there are saying, look, uh, an area about the size of Georgia compared to last year 62,000 wow. square miles yeah open that's incredible to mm -hmm. think about matt and uh, you know i think it's it's pretty clear that the world is warming uh, it's clear to me i mean yeah the data is very clear on this mm -hmm. some people have feelings mm -hmm. as to as to what the causes might be or mm -hmm. or whether this is a normal part of the cycle of weather but right. the scientists are saying look we've been studying the arctic for decades and this is unprecedented. Yeah, I think there's a stat there that what the Arctic was 60 hours above freezing or something like that, and yeah. it's only been like moments where that's happened in the past. In 60, February, right? Right, Which so is 60 wild. consecutive hours. Um, right. So, but that's the Arctic. Like, how often do we actually think about that as it compares to our weather? We can look at spring in the Twin Cities and say, uh, since 1970, on average, we're about two and a half degrees warmer than we were. 50 mm -hmm. years ago. So we've seen that change here mm -hmm. in Minnesota as well. We're also seeing the impact of global warming, of climate change. Out east, the last couple of days, last week or so, the headlines have been about nor'easters hitting New England, and those are supercharged mm -hmm. because of rising sea levels, because of warmer sea waters, and they're doing a lot of damage. Do we know that the open ice, though, in the Arctic, that that open area of water necessarily is flowing down to the area by the east coast where we're seeing these storms mm -hmm. or is there other kind of stuff going on because of the open water well so it, yeah it's hard to say okay this one thing has caused this you know other part this other storm in particular you can't do that but what you can look at is around the globe all of our weather is interconnected. You can trace storms back, you know, all the way, you know, to Asia, to Russia, depending on where they come from that impact us here. So it does impact maybe a little bit more of like jet stream and how that kind of sets so up. So explain that a little bit because the jet stream, I think most of mm -hmm. us know from watching you guys do the weather forecast, yeah. that the jet stream is kind of like the highway that pushes along the weather systems, right? Absolutely. So if the jet stream is weakened, which seems to be at least the current working theory as to what's happening, what does that do? Well, we don't see as many of the storms kind of pushing out. So the storms come and then they're more intense and they don't move out as quickly like we saw with Hurricane Harvey. You can see massive flooding mm -hmm. because storms are parked over an area. They're blocked by an yeah. area of high pressure, things like that. But again, um, you know, we are seeing these stronger storms develop as well as a result of rising temperatures globally. Yeah, yeah. Something certainly to watch when the experts say like, hey, We've been saying it's, been, it's rising. Yeah. It's one thing, but like this is unprecedented. It's been such a politicized issue, and it shouldn't be. It's just science. Yeah. You can't ignore the data that much longer. Yeah.